Good morning, Mr. Case. Good morning. Today we're going to be learning the bassoon. Okay. And the first thing to do with the bassoon is to line it up together and know the names of the parts. Excellent. So what we have here is the bassoon reed. It's a double reed, and as you can see, one of them looks to be two reeds smashed together. Pop that back in there. So we now have the seat strap. Now can you tell me what the seat strap seems to do? Holds the bassoon up. Exactly. Now then, when you put the seat strap on, you want to have it slightly to the front of the chair. That way you can angle the bassoon better. So let's just go ahead and have you put that in there. Then you can always just put it there whatever way, whenever you uh, anchor the bassoon in there. Mm -hmm. You can just adjust it as you go. Excellent. That's a really bad one, but oh, okay. it's life. This is the boot. Now, the reason this is called the boot is... It's the bottom it, piece. It is the bottom piece, exactly. Now, what you're going to look here is this little white line right here. Okay. This will match up to a white line that is on the left wing joint, which is what we're going to go for next. So you're going to hold this. Here is the left wing joint. Now, up here is where the part that attaches to your mouthpiece, your reed goes into okay. it. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Just, but here we go. Here's that white line. White line. Okay. When you put this in, you do not want to hold it by the rods. So you want to okay. hold it like this and just kind of like gently, gently twist and turn it. Yeah. So just go ahead and make sure those white lines match up. Gently twist and turn. Good job, excellent. Now, do you like puzzles, Mr. Case? I do like puzzles. All right, well, if you turn this around, you'll notice that this kind of looks like an unfinished puzzle, doesn't okay. it? All right, so this is the long joint. Okay. Now, this functions just almost exactly the same as the wing joint. Let me put this for a moment. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure, as before, to try to avoid holding it by the rods as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Don't want to bend those. Suckers. Don't want to bend those at all. And you're going to want to put it in there. And you can really just push that one right in. Okay. And you want to get it just about like that. Okay. So that Very close together. these buttons are there. So take this out. I want you to do that. Okay. There you go. Looking good. Excellent. Now, the reason this bottom part. Is, oh, that just a little bit. There you go. Now, the reason, another reason why this bottom part is called the boot is because it's perfect for setting on the ground. And that's what we're going to do next because we have the bell. And when you put the bell on, you want the boot on the ground so that you have a sturdy positioning. Excellent. Now, if you look here, you have yep. this little half a puzzle here. But this, this thing's just full of puzzles. But right here on the bell is the other half. So when you put this on, you want to make sure that this part here lines up with here. Excellent. And you just hold it on there and just put it on. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So before we put on the next part, I'm going to introduce you to the whisper key. The whisper key is this key right here down at the bottom. And what it does is on the uh, bore, let me get it out. On the bore, you will see this part right here. That will block the airflow from there so that you can get a little bit fuller of the tone. And talking about the bore, I'm going to put this in here. Just get it nice and lined up. Fairly evenly. So that whenever you play it, that's blocked. And then whenever you have it up on you, you'll be able to hold it up like this. So, go ahead and hold on to that for right now. Now the next part, now that we've assembled the instrument, is trying to make a sound on it. Okay. Now we're going to start with the mouth reed. The mouth reed. The reed? The reed mouth. Excellent. That, yeah. Now, the first part of forming the aperture for the reed is to say something that ends with the vowel sim formation of ow. So if you say cow, cow. And you want to focus on cow. Oh, cow. Cow. 
Tau. Okay. Right, you don't know. Get that sensation. Yeah. You don't want to roll that. And when you put the mouth on the reeds, you will want to put oh, the pencil. Your upper lip, about a pencil width from the wire. Okay. And then your lower lip, just slightly further back. Okay. So once you give that a shot on just the reed. Okay, now just try to vibe, buzz your lips, blow air, try to make a noise. Excellent. Now that what we're going to do is we're just going to stick that sucker on there. Now give it a shot, just... Uh, no holes. No holes, just... So the way you do that is you're going to touch the tip of the tongue to the tip of the reed to start the note. So then still, you have a ta starting noise. Okay. So, why don't you go ahead and give that a shot. Good, good. So the next thing we're going to do is C. So imagine my arm is a reed. Uh, so you're going to do one, two, and three for your C pitch. Okay. So... Go ahead. Yeah, that's really handy to have that in the mm -hmm. pad cover. So go ahead and play C. <laughs> now do you have the whisper key push? Mm -hmm. Okay, make sure to remember what I said. Always have the whisper key push. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to do now is I want us to do D whole note, C whole note, D half note, C half note, D quarter, C quarter, D quarter, C quarter. Mm -hmm. That's it. So okay. I'll go ahead and give you a beat. One, two, one, two, ready. Alright, uh, hold notes. Hold notes. Okay, ready. Half notes, quarters, right? Ready. <laughs> 